Okay, so our, our next speaker is Yongluo, uh, Ma, did you say Mai? Mai. Uh, and he's a software engineer at the Virginia Bioinformatics Institute. So again, as you have heard a lot about in EC today, and we've had talks more on the biological side, more on the modeling, mathematical side, and now more on the computational side in terms of the various people, their backgrounds, and, and what they bring uh, to these big interdisciplinary problems. Uh, and so he's associated with NIML uh, in the MIP program. Uh, his PhD is, for, is from Purdue University in electrical and computer engineering. Uh, and he worked at Microsoft with the Microsoft uh, Windows Fundamental Group in Redmond, Washington, concentrating on improving Windows 7 operating system for four years before he joined NIML uh, at BBI. Uh, the title of his, of his presentation is the NEC Tool Suite. Thanks for the introduction. So, obviously, I see like uh, everyone from everywhere, like all over the world, and we have many disciplines that they've introduced. So, here, hopefully, I can provide a little bit aspects, uh, insights from engineering side. So, I'm primarily a software engineer, but uh, as I also got my PhD in, uh, at Purdue, so I also write a do some research, write a few papers, and uh, develop some evidence. So in this C tool suite, uh, it's uh, in this C already every brief familiar with uh, a lot of uh, synonyms, uh, terminologies. And this stands for enteric immunity simulator. So it's really like a uh, simulation model and simulation is uh, very, very complex that uh, Stephen Yunbang introduced earlier this morning. It's, uh, it's impossible, I mean, we have to compromise at this level or that level. I mean, it's impossible to simulate all the details. Because I'm an engineer, I mostly focus on performance. If it could not run, I mean, that, it doesn't make any sense. You have to make it run and run fast. Uh, so we have to use many different technologies. Of course, you guys are very familiar after yesterday's uh, one-day-old uh, effort, uh, familiar with the ODE-based uh, modeling and uh, the fabulous tool capacity. I mean, everyone have used it to develop uh, your own model, small, bigger. So it's very great. Uh, there are most, I would say, many, many models are based on ODE. However, there are many scenarios that the things we try to uh, model broader uh, and uh, to different scenarios, we have to use different technology uh, for different uh, cases. So this is really like uh, when I got here uh, about three years ago, I looked, well, there's pretty much two major technologies uh, you have heard. OD and ABM, uh, agent-based. Well, it, because agent-based, it's originally used in the like social studies and economy studies uh, because it's so natural to model the, uh, the human behaviors. They are individual, independent. They are moving. Uh, it's very natural here in in the we 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 introduce ABM because. Looking at the cells, the tissue level, the cells are moving. They are, they are interacting. So it's very also very natural fit ABM. Uh, so when we develop uh, this, but I look at other things. So that's uh, need to do the later uh, in the list. It's in this SDE. Uh, ABM can model different can model uh, stochasticity, uh, but it's very complex. But in some scenarios, we want to keep the simplicity of the equations. But at the same time, we want to add the stochasticity. Uh, uh, so that uh, we try to use stochastic differential equations uh, to model. In, in addition to the ODE, you add randomness into those equations. It becomes a random processes. <coughs> it's called stochastic differential equation. Uh, so this is a... Uh, uh, the, the next one. The next one is ISE. We call it ISE because it uh, stands for in silico experimentation. So you really like full capacity. Uh, most of uh, a lot of other tools as well. You have to download it uh, in your local machine. You have to run it, right? 
Here we try to provide a web-based uh, interface. This right now is only uh, uh, we only publish for those uh, models we have published in our center. So you can play, you can change parameters on the web online basically anytime, any devices, any small or big, and you can you can change the parameters and you can submit and we will get the results back to you. So we will play, definitely we will play a little bit uh, in the afternoon, the hands-on sections, SDE, ISE, and if we have time, we can show you more of ABM. And we, uh, the initial MSM uh, representing the uh, multi-scale modeling platform, it's still under development. Hopefully in the afternoon uh, session, I can show you a little bit uh, the ongoing work. And we also have it, uh, explored uh, initial NN, it's artificial neural network technology. It's another type of model. It's more a data analytics uh, model. So let's, uh, I will go over, uh, since Stephen Yuba already covered ABM, and also Agile covered uh, ABM pretty well, so I will start from SDE. So this is the outline for the NISI uh, stochastic differential equations. Uh, so first, why we want to do stochastic modeling? Well, a lot of cases we say deterministic is pretty good. Well, sure, we don't need stochastic, but there are some cases you do need that. And then we will talk about the tools uh, in computation of knowledge, and then introduce the NCSD outlook, and we will show you a case study on the CD4 uh, TCL differential equation model, and then we can conclude for this. So first, why stochastic modeling? Uh, so uh, there are probably uh, like modern simulation can capture existing knowledge and mechanism synthesize all those small knowledge discovered uh, in many papers into a model. And then you actually can discover new, new knowledge by applying a lot of computation technologies like network inference uh, or many other things. Uh, so it's modern simulation can help you to, to synthesize, capture existing knowledge at the same time can help you to discover new knowledge. And modern technologies, we have talked about equation-based uh, ODE, we have also used a lot of PDE, partial differential equations. Those are all equi mathematical equations. Uh, and then we have agent-based, that those are several uh, uh, major ones. And why stochastic modeling? Uh, because determinist models only uh, model average behavior. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of biological processes uh, are stochastic. So you will see from the uh, case study, you will see some, uh, when everything is deterministic, you run 1,000 times to get all the same results. But then, when you run the stochastic, you can see very interesting scenarios. Sometimes it's double positive, sometimes it's uh, single positive. So th th those scenarios will show up. That's exactly you can observe uh, in the experiment. So for the stochastic model, probably many of you uh, know this glass piece acronym. Uh, it was originally developed for the chemical reactions uh, or biochemical reactions. Because you know like biochemical reactions, if uh, they are uh, uh, mixed well, you can use the master equations, right? But then when the particles numbers are very small, and then you can see the stochasticity because of uh, the particle effect when uh, when the cells are very few and they are moving, they have some chance to meet, to react, or they not, right? But when the mixed, when the number are huge, then it's pretty much deterministic. But this is the original grass piece algorithm uh, idea, and there are a lot of variations uh, to uh, improve the performance, to uh, speed up the simulation. Uh, so I would say uh, grass piece algorithm is very powerful. I mean, a lot, uh, there are many models have been developed uh, based on that algorithm and again, accurate, similar stochastic uh, chemical reactions. However, uh, as we already learned our model, we are, uh, some of our model is pretty high level. Instead of go all the level to the detail of chemical reactions, 
we actually have like species and different pos uh, different uh, reactions. So its protein level is even higher than that. So we uh, and also when the number is getting big, the gross big algorithm is very expensive to run because it's based on the uh, individual uh, simulations. So here we say, well, there may be a compromise, uh, there are middle points uh, in the between. Uh, uh, but that's uh, stochastic differential equations. Uh, so you can see the first part, dy dt, it's uh, equal ft. That's, that's, that's just uh, od, right? But if you add the uh, stochastic at the end, the remnant is the rvt. So it's a noise part uh, in some uh, in the physics. You can think about this noise, but here we can say that's a random process. Uh, so these uh, stochastic differential equations can be used to model stochastic processes, and they have been widely used uh, economy, especially uh, in the last ten or twenty years uh, for the car economic markets and also some physical systems. And when I first got this idea about uh, two years ago, I tried to search for the existing solutions, right? Uh, for the way the SD solver in, uh, 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 in the MATLAB, or uh, they actually, indeed, they are, I found one for the MATLAB, I found one in the ARM. But unfortunately, uh, our CD4 model has like, uh, 60 of the equations, right? Uh, so if you type, say, A1, A2, A60, but actually more than that, if each equation probably has six, three or four uh, species, right? And then when you get everything into MATLAB, I use MATLAB a lot uh, at my PSD like, start. But uh, I only managed like five, six equations at most. Uh, it's easier and you can understand everything, you can do whatever you want. But unfortunately, we have like 60 equations. Here, it's almost impossible to manage all of these in matter. That's the reason we use capacity, right? We use capacity. But then we, uh, we do not have a stochastic differential equation, a version kind of uh, for these computational values. Uh, that's the reason I say, well, this, maybe this is a, a Good contribution if we uh, dig further, uh, because obviously these people need this. But why we do not see? Uh, we why search for literature? I only see two or three uh, SD models in computation biology. Uh, well, that's one reason. Is like we do not have tool. I mean, we, if we do not have tool, it's very hard for you to develop those. Uh, we smell that or, or R. I mean, R is used primary for the statistic. Uh, that's always we say, well, if, if we can have a web-based, everybody can use that. That's wonderful. So this is really, uh, we extend, like we had at the VBI at the Virginia Tech, we have uh, this very successful story for the capacity. So we are thinking, well, if I can extend this and uh, make move this to the web, and so that everybody can uh, do this model very easily. Just like you learned, it's very easy to use uh, for uh, a lot of things, and that's really our goal for development work. It's uh, e easiness of use. Otherwise, uh, we'll be very challenged. So I pretty much uh, already covered this slide. Uh, so I just get a little bit into the uh, development. Uh, that's uh, in this SD, it's the first, to our best knowledge, the first SD modern tool acting for communication about it. And the front end is a force, right? It's a force, you have uh, many fields, you fill up, and you submit. And then the back end, we have the CGI, the, uh, uh, the pro code, and, and the back end further, you send a lot of comment to policy and R to do a lot of uh, computations, processing, uh, so in the stochastic differential equations, and then send the result back as figures. And also, 
for leisure, you can download the results at the table. So the numerical algorithm here is used a very uh, classic uh, solution for the SDE. It's your Moriyama method. So essentially, it's a two-step solution. So the first step, you kind of already learned. So let's build the average case first. Let's calibrate the model using OD. Uh, let's calibrate the average behavior. And then I will say, well, let's see what the critical species you have observed with a lot of stochasticity. And I want to kind of, if we say, well, I want to add some stochasticity to this equation, to these species, or to these parameters, whatever. I mean, we, we, our tool will pro provide the ways for you to add the stochasticity. It's really like, right now, the initial stage, it's separate in two steps. Well, idea we can integrate them together. That may be uh, one, of the, uh, one of the future work we will consider. <laughs> so as I already said, uh, uh, right now we provide three ways of adding the randomness into uh, these equations. You can add directly to the species. You say, well, I observe already like TH17 sales, 5%, 10% variation. Sure, you can, you can add to the species level. Or you can say, well, reaction. The reaction has some randomness. Uh, A plus B equals C. Well, sometimes 100%, sometimes 90%. There's some randomness. You can add over there. Or you can say, well, this reaction has uh, three parameters. This case three, I understand it's related to some, uh, something. And yes, some randomness. Yes, you can add the randomness over there. So basically, we want to provide uh, many places easier for you to add those uh, randomness into the equation. And this is a web, uh, and we will uh, play uh, this afternoon, uh, but this will give you a snapshot. Uh, so basically you can upload a CPS file, that's a capacity file. That model is already calibrated. And they will automatically get all those node numbers uh, uh, names uh, from uh, your file, right? From your file. And then you can choose what I want to observe, right? I mean, for those nine node models, you say, well, I have this node one, node two, node nine. And let's just do the nodes, okay? You say, well, for the node two and node three, I want to add 3% for node two, 5% uh, for node three. That's what I will observe in the uh, experiments. And then you kind of imagine your network. You can see, well, if I add some randomness to this node, it will impact, right? It will impact the later other nodes and other reactions. And then you can imagine, well, what I want to observe. Well, you want to observe node 9, maybe. You want to observe node 8. And you can select those nodes you want to observe. And you click Submit. So basically, you add a few uh, nodes you want to add in the randomness, and you pick the output you want to observe, right, and submit. And then you can observe the results uh, back with those uh, uh, nodes you observed. So really, it's like, uh, after you have a good OD model, we want this OD model to be good solid. And then you say, can I find out uh, if I do some stochastic experiments? on some nodes, what is going to be the result. So you will click, after several seconds, you will see the result. There's a really uh, very convenient way. I mean, we talk about uh, ODE and we talk about ABM. ABM is very natural. Uh, if you have those rules at the uh, randomness, you throw the dice, right? I mean, it's very natural for the stochastic model. Unfortunately, transform mm -hmm one AD, uh, OD model to ABM model, it's not that easy. I mean, we all know ABM model these days are still pretty much cold. It's like XML or even C code or Java code. Uh, it, it's pretty challenging. So I think this SDE tool provides a middle ground for now. And also it's computationally uh, not that expensive. Uh, uh, and you can very quickly you can observe whether, well, if I see the uh, randomness here, whether I can observe some randomness. Uh, 
uh, from the output and whether that's uh, confirmed to uh, our prediction. So this, uh, we probably will go over this a little bit if we have time uh, for this big model, but our plan for the afternoon hand-on session is we do those manual, yes. So, quick question. So, the previous slide, uh, yes. the one that you were simulating, uh, you were just simulating what uh, system you have been for a particular node if the differential equation was statistic. Is that correct? Yeah, it's actually similar to the whole network. But the thing is, like, other nodes are just doing the regular OPE. Okay. Uh, okay. So propagation, okay. basically, each time step you propagate uh, right. these. So, it's like a hybrid OPE? It's hybrid. For now, it's hybrid. So this, uh, it actually, uh, if you, uh, we have a paper published uh, last year in the DIBM uh, 2014, and you can see the results, and you can also uh, download the paper from our website. Uh, we have shown these to a very uh, powerful, you can apply to a very comprehensive uh, big model of 94 species, 46 reactions, and 60 OEs. Uh, for the CD4 T cell differentiation model. Uh, so you, you have seen this a lot. And uh, here basically, uh, we assume uh, TREC and TS17 has a tight equilibrium <coughs> premium regulated by FOXP3 and our gum team. Uh, these actually have some theoretical background uh, from biology. So uh, this is we will go over maybe a little bit uh, in the afternoon. So I don't want to go over all the details. To this basically this is really you want to find out a uh, balance point. If you break something, you will see a lot of interesting things that. That's what you want to find out. It's not well. I I just inject randomness to any node. You will not in many nodes. You will have no effect at all because it doesn't impact other nodes. But if you see a balance, like, well, if I break a little balance, if I have randomness in this experiment, you will see maybe dramatically different. That's something at, at least to start. You want to see, uh, you want to play with the, the, the model. Uh, that's exactly the idea uh, of the CD4 model. Well, we've, uh, that's actually did this work. We uh, found this balance point and played with it and really show some good results, uh, double positive or single positive, those scenarios. So it's very interesting uh, uh, to have this. So it's, uh, so <coughs> as I said, uh, we will try a little more, so I don't want to go from things we have a uh, limit of time uh, in the morning. So as a summary, uh, the major contributions uh, we are the first one, uh, it's a web-based SD tool, and you can very conveniently uh, play with uh, the tool you develop with capacity, uh, and you can add randomness into it. And it's a uh, target or, uh, audience uh, computation values. And we have uh, used a very uh, comprehensive uh, model to show this is a really powerful tool very effective. For the future, we are definitely, as I already mentioned, we have a lot of uh, areas we could extend this work. And we also can develop more SD models. And also, whether we can integrate, that's a long term, I guess this will be very challenging. Because we say we calibrate the model with the average data, right? Can we really calibrate the model with the with not just average data, can we also calibrate the randomness part at the same time? Basically, we try to integrate these two into one. That would be very challenging. And we will also want to investigate uh, the modern scale modern uh, part. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I want to talk about, the stochastic differential equation. This tool, we will play a bit uh, this afternoon, if you have any questions. Yes. I'm wondering how is the sensitivity analysis available for Opacio and what we saw earlier in the post? 
Does that cover the correlate with which parameters to be applied to the Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great question. Actually, I think Agile is probably the better person. That what I, I learned is Agile really like play with the sensitivity, like which are those impactful, whether that's conforming to the experiments or not. And then you pick a few, well, you can pick every node, but that's right. I mean, as a research, you want to start with a few, like two or three nodes. And then you really want to observe you have some assumptions predictive, right? You want to predict it. You have a, a lot of assumptions. If I break this uh, very cheap, very balanced process, we will see something. Yes. Definitely the sensitivity analysis in the capacity played a role when you pick the nodes. Yes. Any other questions for you still? Yes. I just thought that I <coughs> have a computation question. Is how long, just when you say you, you run this one on the yeah. uh, T cell models, have yes. 96, and then what's the running time? I like think how long the web base, how long I have to wait to get the results? Uh, for this seconds, right? I think it's seconds. Yeah. Like 10 or 15 seconds, probably. It's uh, it's basically a hybrid model. You know, capacity when you when you develop develop in the model is very time intensive, uh, time uh, time expensive because you have to think very carefully which nodes how to represent. After the model is constructed, simulate it. It's very efficient. I mean, capacity provides very efficient uh, numerical solutions for time course or even uh, stable steady states. A lot of uh, those items very effective. This is time course data obviously. It's uh, even though we add uh, the randomness in each small step, but still is still very uh, very efficient. It's not like agent based I, I know you probably think about agent based it will run twenty minutes or even one day, two days. It's it's exactly that's like we originally I look at the uh, what technologies we were using three years ago, we were using ABM and, uh, and these. But then I say, wow, this ABM, wow, it's, it's, it's very time con consuming. Like it, it takes 30 minutes. Right now we reduce to like five or six, but still quite long. I mean, uh, so this is really, uh, it's a middle solution, as I will see you, as I said before what I looked for the literature and what other fields people are using at that time. Yes? So, do you think that if you increase the number of random nodes in the model, your simulation will be as efficient as... That's another very good question. At this time, we haven't... Uh, there's a lot of... If you, if you search the literature, you will see stochastic differential equation. You will see many books on that. Each book is missing. Uh, whether that will, I mean, I definitely, there may be very touching issue at, at some time when you have a large number of stuff, and uh, many properties will change. And whether that numerical solution is very effective or not, we, we have to investigate. So right now, we say, as far as we are doing, we limit to five, or if they really want, I mean, that five, at least right now, works for a lot, of, most of the time, we, in our lab, in our center. So and we observe some pretty good results, but we haven't really played a large number. But that, that's maybe mathematician or mass, mathematical scientists. I mean, that their, that's their role. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. In silico, uh, uh, experimentation. So this is really another, uh, it, since I already introduced SD, so this will be very easy to understand. So this is similar, a, a web-based tool. It's really to do the simulation. This is to OD simulation instead of stochastic differential equation, SD. This is really just OD. Back end, it's all capacity, okay? It's all capacity. It's really like, uh, the idea is like, well, we have this model, and what are people are going to do? They have to download the model from our website or biomodel.net, and they have download the capacity, right? And then they have to find the proper 
uh, version underlined, you can see. But here is really like, uh, we provide a web-based. Okay, this is the model we have published two or three months ago, one year ago. And there are five, ten parameters you can change. You, you, you want to change and you want to play with it. It's a very basic sandbox for you to play very conveniently. And this is similar it's a technology it's, uh, we use uh, front end, web browser, back end. So, <coughs> capacity, uh, we use Ajax, some web technologies to show the result. And it's, it's really like the te technology wise, it's very similar. But this is limited to uh, the published models. And we customize each model because we know. For the CD4 model, we want you to play with these five nodes, five nodes, uh, five parameters, and you change, and you can observe these four figures. So everything is customized. So they really provide you a very streamlined experience. Instead of you choose the node, you do, and you, you kind of, especially for the new big models, you are lost, right? I mean, very easy. But this one say, well, these four figures, that's published in the, uh, our publication. And we show exactly these four figures for you. Okay, all the lines, everything exactly just like in the paper. And that's a few parameters we, you can change. And you can observe what's going to happen. So that's really like uh, uh, provide a very convenient tool uh, for you to play with our map. So we will play this uh, in, uh, in this afternoon's way. Okay, so I guess yes. Okay. Yes. So, so this uh, web interface yes. basically restricted to the model published from this Absolutely. group, yeah. not from yeah. the outside. Yeah. We could extend, uh, but uh, to start, we want really people have a great user experience. I mean, if you if you provide the capability to run whatever the model they want, sure, we can do that theoretically. Uh, but then the experience might not be like that. But this really provide you like application web experience for our models, and you can play with the parameters. Okay. Any other questions for this guys? Yes. Um, this might seem a little off the track, but yes. what I'm asking is, so you're saying that in this, after we build the model and everything, you have to choose which nodes we were, we were trying to do. Uh, the, yeah, and, I mean, in this case, it's parameters. So basically, it's, it's our, the entire thing is not automated. So we have to choose, okay, so these are the nodes that's going to be having, so that's the fashion, these are the nodes, that's the that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to understand, like, so, is it more on the, like, is it an interface that you guys are trying to say, okay, I'll do this without making an obvious thing, use this because, yes. like, why wouldn't I do exactly. this in Exactly. Agile? Exactly. Basically, I think Agile will definitely explain a lot of why we choose those five or six uh, parameters. Basically, if you turn off, turn off like, put this TF gamma, well, to zero, and then you will trigger which, uh, like, uh, phenotype. If you do that, you will differentiate into different. Those five or six uh, parameters are for initial condition, initial values. It's basically, what I want to set the, the initial values for those species uh, are specific pits, so that if you cut off this and turn on this, you turn to the Yosemite, and if you cut off the, these two and turn on the other three or one, and then you get another. Any other questions? Okay, so those are two web-based tools. Now I want to introduce a little bit more skill, although we'll get a lot of uh, details. Uh, Dr. Baskenia will get to that Thursday. We'll go one day focus on model skill model. So here I just want to present a little bit. Uh, as my background is more uh, soft engineer, so we provide a lot, some details and insights of the implementation. Uh, so the, why we want the model to be, as we get more comprehensive, we say, well, we want to model the tissue level. Okay, we have some historic images like the lesions. And then we have 
definitely for immunologists, uh, they like the flow data, right? We can count the cells. Okay, the cell counts. And uh, we can also have cytokines. They are moving in the tissue. How? And we also have proteins. We can get off Western blocks data, right? And uh, we have genetic data, clinical data, a lot of various uh, data. And they are focused on different uh, scales. They are focused on different, uh, at different level of the same problem, I would say. I mean, often it's the same problem. But they are focused on different scales, different levels. And unfortunately, there is no existing ready-to-use tool. There are, there are many, right? If we say SPM, SPML tool, there are many. I mean, a lot of tools they are doing ODE. Well, there are some tools to PDE, uh, and there are some tools to ABM as well. But then when we look at those real platform, we can easily uh, stitch all these levels together. I mean, it's very challenging, as you can see, how to match between the uh, skills. That's as Stephen uh, this morning said, probably the worst idea is like you just throw a model of this skill and try to uh, just move, match these two uh, models together. That's probably the worst idea. You have to do something. I mean, because different skills have different data, have different nature, have different simulation technologies. Uh, so, so really like developing this uh, platform we had two goals. And like, make it generic. Make it like you can add on other uh, model technologies. Right now, this, to, this platform, in the, in the initial development, we can integrate OD, we can integrate PD, and we can integrate agent-based model. But because we are based on the Java object-oriented uh, programming, uh, the Python, so for whatever other, we are actually thinking about neural network model, we can also uh, add to it. Um, it's really we want to develop, strive uh, for the best user experience. We want to make this user friendly uh, so that uh, the computation biologist uh, like you can use it without really like need to write the code or need to uh, understand a lot of what's going on in this. So another goal is like, of course, we want to say whether we want to use this platform to, to develop some good model, model scale models. We have uh, models of tissue level. We have models of the intracellular uh, model. Can we put them together? What we will see? If we knock out something inside the cell, what we go, going to see in the tissue level? When you have many cells moving, uh, if you knock out one specific uh, gene from one specific cell type, what's going to happen? That's a, if you can simulate this, obviously you can, you can test your hypothesis in this very comprehensive, uh, comprehensive level uh, very quickly, right? I mean, instead you have to prepare your mice, you have to do that months of work. <laughs> so hopefully, I mean, idea that's a goal, like, we want to test if I knock out this gene, that's inside the cell. They will secret different proteins, and they will secret different proteins in the environment, and then we will trigger different reactions from the neighbor cell, and then they will, the whole tissue level phenomenon will be different. We want to observe this in this knowledge scale model, and that's, that, that's exactly what, why we want to print up this knowledge scale. <laughs> so here you already see this. Uh, uh, so I would, I do, I, since I already talked a lot, I don't want to repeat too much. Basically, each level has different technology, different tool, and uh, different time and uh, space scale. And this is architecture. Okay, so we have the a, a, <coughs> ABM, and then we have the PD solver, OD solver. The OD solver, we actually use capacity. Okay, so the whole platform, uh, and we have in visualizations. Uh, the whole platform is uh, based on Java, uh, and capacity is in C. So we have to use uh, called the technology called uh, the library uh, wrapper. 
to uh, wrap it up. And uh, the left side is code, and you change code, and the right side you see the visualization. You can see different region. It's we have a different color of the background to show you the cytokines. There may be like some cytokines if inflammatory you want to make it red or turn to red. Okay, if it's green, that means this area is more uh, regulatory region. And then you can see the cells are moving, they have different colors. Uh, so it's really like you can observe this in the real time. Uh, I, since there are, maybe we have limited time, I don't want to get all the details. Basically, we try to use this object-oriented uh, programming pattern for this. So we have all these over, it's one object, okay? Uh, the cell, the T cell is one object. Uh, and uh, all the all the things are objects, and uh, and each cell then call an OD solver. Say, can you solve this equation for me? This is all, this is the capacity file, and then this is uh, the initial condition. Solve this for me, and see what are those uh, cytokines that I I want to secret into the uh, environment. So it's really like each cell check its environment check the cytokines, and throw this, all the information to the OD solver, to the capacity OD solver, say, well, this is my intracellular model. Could you solve this equation for me? These are the initial conditions for the environment. And then after I get the result back, the cell will secret uh, different uh, cytokines into the environment. And the cytokines will diffuse into the environment. As you see here, pretty much is diffuse in the environment, and they may impact the uh, other cell types. Also, everything is object. Uh, I guess this is too much detail. So lastly, I want to just want to say, well, we are still very initial. Like there are a lot of work we need to do. Like whether we have to reduce the model instead of use the huge model. That's probably. That's different, that's probably a bad time to We have to do something. So in general, for this model scale model development, it's a divide and conquer. It's iterative. You have to have good models for each scale, and then you do some integ integral uh, also uh, fitting. For future work, uh, so definitely uh, we want to have some performance in implementation and uh, we want to study some right now there are two or three things we are considering how to match different scale like do we have every cell to have one OD solver of its own or we say well many cells can share one OD solver I mean if everyone has its own OD solver it's very computation is it's very expensive so uh, we are considering several technologies to try to re uh, improve the performance. And we'll ultimately we'll get this into the high performance computing task. And uh, <coughs> for future, well, another future direction is like, if you have multiple type of data, stochastic data, how we're going to deal with that? As I already, in the very first several slides, we say we have this historic change, we have this, this, we have many different type of Data. How, how can you utilize them for this really modern scale? It's it's this is really like for the modern scale modeling for uh, it's quite initial. Honestly, I think it's very initial stage. We are at a very good time. We hopefully see a lot of exciting uh, outcomes from uh, the studies in this area. I guess uh, this will end my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, we have you. Yes. I'm just curious, so I'm on the industrial side of the industry, so all of these are very different. Uh, can you cite an example of an industry that's following the industry? Uh, we just see a recent paper. Uh, I forget where it was published. It's uh, for a job development. They try to have model scale model for the job development. Because job, job development, they have PKPD model, but at the same time, we, they try to put another 
the intracellular model together. I, I don't know all the details, but uh, that's one very recent paper we have seen. They try to put these two together so that uh, you really like and hope you better to, um, to do the uh, PKBD model. Yes. There are a few studies. I, I guess the same like in general, like for the model and simulation, we do see people have higher and higher needs uh, or requirements. Well, originally in the 70s, we probably went to equation very good model for one small process reduction in this approach. People were very happy, but these days, no, I mean, we have to use a lot of different technologies, like, like, all about biology. I mean, that's, uh, well, we will, hopefully, we will see more and more applications on this. Yeah. But it's, it's going to be challenged, honestly. Because if you can build a good solid model for each skill, it doesn't really make too much sense. You put the, all, everything together, and uh, you don't know how predictive it's your model. But we, in our center, we try to do these things really careful. Like only this like, CD4 model is very solid to work. And then we start to extend to SDE. We start to extend to the model scale model. Any other questions? Thank you.